everyone, this is Yana Smakula for SimonSaysTM.com and thanks for joining me today. I am excited to bring you another episode for my bi-monthly EB for Yana video series. In today's video, I'm showing you how to create a watercolor galaxy background for a simple missing you card. Now this project probably seems intimidating because right now you're thinking there's no way I can create that watercolor galaxy background. Trust me, you can. You just have to give it a try and add some black and white at the end. This really is just the main trick. If you don't believe me, just go ahead and click to the middle of this video to see how horrible my background looked and then click back to the beginning to continue watching this video. I do apologize for my voice. I'm just back from Simon Says DM Create event that took place this past weekend in Columbus and I did a lot of talking there so my voice is probably still in Columbus while I'm, I'm already back in Phoenix. So I probably don't really sound like myself. Please never mind that. I'm going to use a new Woodland Critters stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh to stamp an adorable bear and a little deer to create a scene. I'm also using a Camping Friends stamp set, also from Pretty Pink Posh. This is an older set, but I've discovered that it works really well with this new Woodland Critters set. And I'm going to use the wooden sign from here, as well as a Missing You sentiment to add to my scene. This set has a lot of great images, like that tent, that can work well with the critters. Another set I'm using today is called Scene Stars, and it is from Simon Says Stamp. It is an older set from one of Simon's uh, card kits, and it's a fantastic one to use when creating galaxy backgrounds. I have shared a similar card over in my blog some time ago using this set and identical technique. You are seeing it on the screen right now. It's one of my most favorite projects, and it also got a lot of comments about the background. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to make this background, how to create that watercolor galaxy. I'm starting by stamping several stars and versifying onyx black ink onto watercolor paper using my mini misty stamp positioner. The paper I'm using today is Arches Hot Press Watercolor. It is smooth and perfect for stamping and then watercoloring. It has almost no texture at all, so images stamp really nicely. The reason I'm using versifying onyx black ink is because it is nice and rich and it is, all, it is also waterproof. And this is all I need for this project. I need to make sure my ink is not going to bleed when it comes in contact with water. I'm repositioning my images and also adding a sentiment and stamping more stars onto my background. I'm using a stamp positioner, but this stamping can easily be done using a clear block. I'm also going to stamp my critters and I'm using the same ink for this. I'm making masks for my critters as I go as I'm overlapping them to create a scene. You can use coordinating dies and simply stamp your images onto a different piece of watercolor paper, color, cut them out, and later layer to create a scene. But for this project, I didn't mind doing some quick masking. I'm not cutting my masks out completely to save time. I'm only cutting the part of the mask that will actually be used. So I have my deer. Next, I stamp the bear. And now I'm stamping the tree stump under the bear to make it look like as if the bear is sitting on it. I'm also going to stamp some grass and mushrooms to complete this scene. Now that my stamping is done, I can move on to watercolor part of this project. I am taping my panel onto the board. I will be adding quite a bit of water, so I want this panel to warp as little as possible. And taping it down onto the board does help to prevent warping quite a bit. I didn't tape the bottom as I stamped my images too close to the edge and I knew I'd have to cut off that taped part of the card, so I opted not to tape that part at all. For my coloring, I'm using my Gonzai Tambi watercolors and I'm first going to watercolor my critters. I will say that I kept being unhappy with my critter watercoloring, so I later decided to use my Copic markers to add shading and detail. You can definitely combine different coloring mediums to add details and finishing touches. Don't feel like you can't mix mediums. You most definitely can. This coloring took quite a bit of time, so this is why I am speeding it up a lot here so that the video isn't too long. 
So I started doing my coloring using a paintbrush, but later switched to a water brush as at this point I'm more comfortable using a water brush for watercoloring small detailed images. After I finished coloring my critters, I moved on to the background. I used a flat brush to wet my background and next switched to a round number 7 brush and started adding color here and there. I started with blue and dropped it onto my wet background and also added yellow in the same way, making sure not to mix the two together to avoid getting that shade, that green shade. Because my background was wet, I didn't have to do a lot of work and the paper did all the work for me. My pigment traveled on the paper and created beautiful soft spots of color. I used my heat tool and dried this layer. Next I came in with more blue, this time a more saturated color, and again added it onto the background. I didn't wet the background this time, from now on I'm, I only worked on a dry background. I used a heat tool and again dried this layer. Next, I switched onto purple and dropped hints of purple color here and there, making sure to add a very light color purple next to my critters, not to make the background there too dark. Again, I used my heat tool and dried the paper. At this point, my background didn't really look like much, and this is what might be scary if you're doing this for the first time. The trick is to keep going and keep adding color. So I'm going to continue adding color to my background and continue drying the panel in between each color. Finally, I'm going to start adding black here. And I'm using my brush and adding black cloud looking blobs of pigment. I'm avoiding adding too much next to my critters and also next to the sentiment. The background does look pretty bad at this point and I'm going to be honest with you, I hated it, but I kept going. I diluted white paint for my watercolor set and added lots of white drops onto my background to mimic stars. After I dried this layer, white ended up looking very pale. But that didn't bother me as I knew I could fix it. I used a clean wet brush and went over some sections to soften the edges of the watercoloring and bring color to those areas especially next to the critters that I have missed. To intensify the white, I used a white gel pen and outlined nearly all of those white dots. I also added a few dots where I felt I needed more and made some of my dots larger and some smaller. At this point, I have also removed my panel from the board and you can see that white edge there that was taped off with the black stamped stars. I really like that edge and if you have an edge like that on all four sides, you can even keep it for a nice looking effect. But I later trimmed mine so I only had a watercolor panel left. I die cut and stamped a wooden sign onto the same Arches Hot Press watercolor paper, added a missing you sentiment and watercolored the sign to match the rest of my scene. I have also foam mounted my watercolor panel onto an A2 top folding card base. I have trimmed the panel to be 4 by 5.5 inches and foam mounted the stamped and die cut sign on top. I used black foam tape to make sure it wouldn't be visible on the card. Now I mentioned I didn't quite like the coloring on my critters, so I used Copex to add some additional details and shading. I used an R20 marker and added blush, and also used several colors of brown to intensify the shadows on my bear, and also a green marker to fix the grass. So here is a finished look at this watercolor galaxy background and card. It does look intimidating, but really it isn't that hard to make. I hope you will give this idea a try and we'll finish it even if you don't like it during the process. As always, please do tag us on social media so we can take a look at your projects. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will see you next time. Bye!